Well, we greet you in the Holy Ghost. I'm Brother Dwayne, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Cry for America. We are brought to you by the Shekinah Family Worship Center, where Pastor Fields is our leader. We can be reached on the phone at area code 313-300-6457, or find us online under the Cry for America. We're on Facebook, Rumble, YouTube, and the Poppy Podcast. Please do us a favor and subscribe to our channel. Leave a like, a comment, a thumbs up. Share it across your platforms and help us to let this word of God go forth as we are documenting God's servant, Apostle Quile, as he is ministering here in Detroit, August 27th of 2023, ministering on a charge to keep the call of God. Ah, let's see what God requires of those that serve him. Let's go now to Apostle Quile. You all love that song. That song is a, a wonderful song. A charge to keep I have. We are singing this because of the charge that will be coming to us from the Lord. And if from, that, from then onwards, you have a charge. A charge that you must keep with the Lord. Unless you don't want to have any charge to keep when the call comes forth. Right, so a charge to keep, I have a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, and fit it for the sky. He says, to serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. It is my calling to fulfill, and that is to serve this present age. Are you supposed to serve another age or this present one? Because that's where you live. These are your generation. So you are to do everything to save your generation. Right? So John Wesley recognized that his, his generation, his generation or is his charge from God to reach out to them. Right? To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my powers engage. May this charge engage all my powers. Everything within my being be given to this charge and its fulfillment. Ah, yes, uh, to do my master's will. Yes, then he said, arm me with jealous care. You see, you see, I, I don't see ministers that have a, a jealous care for the glory of God and for the honor of God and for, and for God to get glory in the life of his people. They are not jealous for the glory of God to be made manifest. They are not jealous for the name of the Lord to be preserved, blameless. And you call yourself a minister of God, you ain't got no jealousy to keep what God has committed to you with a care from the heart. You don't want your God, all right, to, you know, to, to, to maybe to, you know, receive any blame or any blight on his character. Because of you. Because of you, God's name will be blamed. Because of your conduct, you allow the name of God to be, uh, what, to be blemished. It means you ain't jealous for his name to be honored. And it is our job to make sure that the name, that glorious name, the Lord your God. You see, Moses told them that glorious name, the Lord, that fearful name, the Lord your God. You don't fear that name. You are not willing to just to preserve the, the holiness of that name in your conduct and character. Ah, arm me with jealous care, as in thy sight to live. Not to live as in your sight. A jealous care to make sure that you are, you see me as I'm living the life before you. You are aware of me, you know. Ah. And, and, oh, thy servant, Lord, prepare, prepare me, oh, my Lord, prepare me a strict account to give. Yes, Thank you, Lord. What kind of account are you preparing? See this man of God? He said, God, prepare me. Ah, prepare me that my account will be strictly correct. Because you shall appear before the judgment seat of, of Christ to give an account. And what account are you going to give? Is it with tears for your failures? Or 
is it with the confidence of God that you did what your master commanded you to do? Ah. Are you going to do what your master commanded you to do? Or are you going you, you, to keep on doing what your will tells you to do? I tell you, it's very sad, but it's going to be so for some people. They're going to do their will still. So he says here, and oh, thy servant, Lord, prepare a strict account to give. Then the most dangerous of all these verses is the last one. Serious. Whoa. I told you when the Lord first showed me this song, I sang it as a Methodist guy. I was in the church. I was, you know, have a, a choir robe like a, like the what? Like the crow. You know, the, what's the name? What crow? Raven. Raven has some white color. Oh, yes, God. The rest is dark. <laughs> the raven has a white color to fool us. The rest is dark. <laughs> My goodness. And I sang this song so many years. I did not understand what I was singing. Until after many years after I have been born again. About 10 years ago. Right when I go home. And I'm asked to go and, 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 and you, know, you know teach some word in a, in a Methodist church. With all the you know, you know, elderly you know, people who are singing. Brother they sang the song. The last verse. Whoa I'm sitting out there. The Lord said. Do you hear what they said? I said, no, hold on. I didn't hear nothing. He said, <laughs> I'm ready to go preach. So I didn't hear nothing. He said, now listen to it again. And they sang it. I said, wow. Brother, I was scared good. <laughs> and for the fact that the Lord said, put this song in your arsenals. Put this song in your arsenal. Because it's a song that if you don't wake up when you sing this song, then you are dead indeed. Listen to what he says. Help me to watch and pray. The preacher is asking for help. Ah, did, you, did you not give me that word today? A prophet, young man, he showed me a word yeah, this morning. He said, watch and pray. <laughs> he said, what I, what I say to you, no one, I say to you all, watch. The prophet man showed you, he said, I got me a word I want to show you. He said, wow, he got a word. He'd be reading his Bible. <laughs> oh, brother. He said, help me to watch and pray. And on thyself rely, not on no one else. You ain't got no one else to rely, brother. You want to serve God? You want to rely on your mama? You want to rely on your daddy? You want to rely on the pastor, on the so-called apostle? Brother, you, you are going to fall. Because these men cannot sustain you. I cannot sustain you because I didn't die for you. I can give you counsel, but I cannot sustain you when the barrels are coming. So he says here, teach me. Wow. He said, he said help me to watch and pray. And on thyself rely. Assured. Ooh. <laughs> I know you have assured me. That is an assurance from God. What great assurance. What a scary assurance. To have it from God. Assured. If I my trust betray. If I betray what God committed to me. To take good care of for him. If I betray. If I don't fulfill. The call of God on my life. You got calls. I say you got a call. I don't care who you are. You got a call from the heavenly, heavenly kingdom. Only you ain't taking time to seek the Lord. So you don't know that you've been called. Who called you by the gospel? You know the Lord Jesus Christ who called you by the gospel? Okay, okay. After you've come in, there's another call. A second call to commit yourself to God. You ain't done that. You've been going to church. You never committed yourself to God. Today you will have the opportunity to answer that call. Ah, a call is coming from the, from the heavens. Now look, 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 look at what the, 
the, the, the, the, the prophet John Wesley said. He said here, assured, if I my trust betray, I shall forever live. Uh, are you following it on, on online? Did you did you see? Did you read it with me? Did you read it? Brother Charles, did you read it with me? Uh the, the, the lost doulas, did you read it with me? Sister Mercy, did you hear it? Sister Cora, did you hear it? If you like, play with the call of God on your life. If you like, just just put set the call aside and go and do what you want. Ah, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. People don't fear God. Listen. Was you there when Jesus was being tortured? Was you there? I wasn't there. But when it was revealed to me, brother, I was broken. How come this man stood in for me, a crooked man? A wicked man, an atheist, and for my sake they tortured him. You ain't seen it, but you've been going to church. I say you ain't seen it. I say you ain't seen Isaiah fifty-three yet. You ain't seen Isaiah fifty-two, the last two verses. You ain't seen it. Oh no, you don't. You read the word, but you don't see it. <laughs> you read the word, but he ain't touching. The Lord said. But you all read the word, your heart don't get it. You say, how can you commune with your Lord when the word don't touch your heart? Woo! John Wesley got scared. <laughs> and I, the same scaring feeling came upon me when I heard this. I understood it. If I mess up with the call, I shall forever die. And if I shall for forever die, what's mean? I shall live forever. Forever I shall die. What's that meaning? I will burn in hell. This is what this is what Charles Wesley and his brother. This is what they wrote by the Holy Ghost, a mighty song. And that is the truth. You play with the call of God on your life, you shall forever die. Ah, assured. He said, what? You, you, you all don't read Bible. You all don't, <laughs> you all don't read the song? The, Brother Dwayne, did you see the song? Okay. Sister Wonder, <laughs> Sister Wonder, Sister Angie, did, 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 did you see the song? Did you see the word? Uh, the deacon? Uh, uh, but, but, but Brother Gabriel, did you, did you just see it with me? Pastor Phil, you saw it? <laughs> did he say, did he say assured? Oh, I, I hope. <laughs> If a man is assured, he know for certain that this is what is going to happen to him. Ah, why don't we wake up from our slumbering? Our slumbering souls. He ain't alive no more. Ah, Jesus, have mercy. Multitudes in the house of God are slumbering. In a deep sleep. They are not woke. <laughs> they are not woke to Jesus. They are woke to wickedness. Woke to lies. Look, woke to perversions. Evil doers. They are woke to do evil and lie. But they are not woke in their consciences to the living presence of God. Ah. Uh, I mean, I mean, I love you, but I got a job to do. I sure that if I don't want you, the Lord will tell you, now what did you do there? <laughs> what did you do there if I don't want you? The Lord will say, what did you do there? I gave you the anointing to expose wickedness and you just looked at their faces and you were scared by them. Jeremiah, I'm warning you, don't look at their faces. <laughs> Don't look at Dwayne's face. How tall he is. Don't look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't look at Pastor Fee. He was a, a former military. Don't look at that. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at them, they scare you. 
And you are scared, I shall make it worse for you, he said. Ooh, my Lord, my Lord. Assured that if I, I my trust betray, I shall forever die. Do you have a call of God on your life? Or you don't even know that there's a call on your life? You don't need, do you have a call on your life? Or you don't even know that there is a call on your life. A call on your life. Every child of God, born of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, has a call from God to bear witness for Jesus Christ. Some of you are called to go to some places. And go and labor. Yeah, I was called from, from, from New Jersey and came to, to Michigan. Didn't know where I was going. Then I was summoned in Insta. They brought me to Insta. It was a call. Then God said, this is where I want you. And I want you to, to pray. I sent you here to pray for the wickedness in that city. Did we pray, Pastor? But I doing your work. Was you there when I came down there? We were blasting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Deacon was there. All right, you wasn't there. You was there. But I, but I gave her you in. You was in California, boy. <laughs> sister Ile, you wasn't there. Oh, you ain't come yet. Sister, sister, you ain't come yet. Sister, oh, you ain't come. All the sisters, we ain't come yet. <laughs> but we did labor. We did labor. We laid our sister Cora was there. Yes, yeah, sister Cora was there. We lay down our soul to cry out for Insta, to cry out for Detroit. Was there a revival that stirred up? Are you hearing me? And I knew I left Insta with my conscience calm. <laughs> My conscience was calm because I did, I labored as God sent me into that lion's den. <laughs> Woo, yes, I don't know about your call. Maybe it is in your neighborhood. Maybe God gave you your neighborhood and you, you just turned a blind eye to it. There's all kinds of violence going on there, all kinds of wickedness, darkness, but you don't care. You live among them, but you don't care about their soul dying. Ah. Do you care about those in your neighborhood? Do you care about those that you, you are neighbors with? Ah. So I want us to sing that song. Pastor Fish, you have it? All right. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. Ah, yes, God. A God to glorify. And never die so to save and fit it for the sky. <clears throat> I should if I my trust be true, I shall forever die. Hey. Woo! Aya gazango, igando bagaza. Let there be fire, God. Let there be fire on the very seat that they are sitting. Let there be fire under it. As, 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 as uh, uh, Jonathan Edwards prayed until hell's fire appeared under the seat of the congregation. Ah, and they were scared God. They cried for help from God. Now we ain't scared of God. Multitudes are going astray into the, in the pit of the destruction, but he don't move us. I say he don't move you. Oh no, don't tell me he moves you. If you move, if, if people going to hell moved you, 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 you know, there will be a new attitude that will be born in you. Brother, you, you know you can't do nothing, but you can pray. You can call on God to do something for your neighbors. You can call on God to do something for the, for the neighbors where you, where you stay. 
I say you can call of God to show mercy to your co-workers. To save them, oh God. Yes. When you are saved, you see, you don't know the Holy Ghost and the intercession he burst in our souls. When we walk with God, the Holy Ghost is our helper to pray the kind of prayers that God desires from believers. Ah, can the Holy Ghost lead you into the, into the pathway of intercession? Can you allow the Holy Ghost to put the burdens of multitudes who are going to hell on your heart? Can you allow the Holy Ghost to come alongside and say, give me your heart. Let me travail in your heart for the multitudes who are lost. Will you allow the Holy Ghost? Will your heart be the heart of God towards sinner man? Will the mercy of God find a place in your soul? To be poured over those who have no grace. Will you allow God? Will you allow God to come and dwell inside you like he said he would? And use your body as his temple. Will you allow God or do you see yourself as God's temple? Do you see your body as the place God lives? <laughs> I say... Do you see yourself as God's temple, God's dwelling place? If you don't see yourself, then you are blind gold. God, the Bible you read tells you openly. Know ye not that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God, and you are not of your own? You are purchased with a price. Ah, therefore glorify God in your spirits and in your bodies, which are God. Amen. What? Amen. Said the apostle Paul. The apostle said, what? Jesus. Know ye not? You've been going to church. Your pastor didn't show you that your bodies are the dwelling place of Christ. It hasn't, I know you go to church, but it hasn't dawned on you. I know you are a pastor, but, but, uh, brother Charles, don't get mad at me. But are you aware that your body is the dwelling place of Almighty God? My brother, Zakuriando, Zaga, brother Dulos, are you aware that God purchased you with his blood so he can dwell inside you? Sister Mercy, you want to sing a God as a song for God? But are you aware that the Holy Ghost indwells your body as the dwelling place of God? I'm in trouble. I know I'm in trouble with you all. You all don't like the word. You all don't like my word. But I, I have to be honest with God. I have to be faithful to God. I have to charge you. Do you know, young man, do you know that as you stand there, the living Christ dwells inside you? Do you know it, son? Do you know it that God liveth inside you? And God is going to watch over you if you allow him. Are you going to surrender your inner life to God? Almighty God is after you because he loves you. He want to use you for something great in your life. My son, God loves you. Do you know it? Listen, you know why them devils are fighting you, my angel? You know why them devils are fighting you? They don't want you to get well? You know why? God wants your body. Them devil says no. That's the fight. That's the fight. But God will travail and God will prevail. You will be delivered in the name of Jesus. You will serve God in the name of Jesus. You have been prepared by God for a time as this. Shake yourself and stand with your God. For your God is about to break the chains. Break the chains of the enemy over your soul and your body. And you will be the dwelling place of God. You will be the dwelling place of God. Fear not. I know what is going on, said the devil. Well, I said, God, I know what is going on. And the devil cannot, cannot take hold of my body and destroy it. Allow me, allow me to fight for you. Allow me to fight for you. Allow me to deliver you from the hands of the enemy. And I will use your, your body as my house. My house. Uh, know ye not, know ye not that your bodies are the temples of the living Christ? Yes, Lord. All of you know ye not 
that the spirit of God dwells inside you. Know you know that your body is delivered from the hands of the evil one. So that God can dwell inside you. Your body is not for fornication. It's not for uncleanness. It's not for all impurities. Your body has been sanctified for the indwelling of Christ in your body. Amen. Do you know that? And are you willing to let Christ have his way? Ah, amen. The amen, the amen is too small. The, 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 hey, brother, brother Antonio, ah, I love him. He's right there. Yeah, he's there. He's there. He's there. Brother Antonio is there. Your body belongs to the Holy Ghost. Ah, you are the dwelling place of the living Christ. Therefore, surrender to him and he will bring mighty things, mighty things through your body in the name of Jesus. Ah, now you say we got, we got Holy Ghost and you think Holy Ghost cannot use you, son? You think the Holy Ghost cannot use you, Brother Dwayne? You think the Holy Ghost don't know what he want to do with you? Will you allow him, Brother Deacon, allow the Holy Ghost? You know this young man, God is about to do something. Surrender your life. You, you, are the, you are the key. Surrender your life to God. Because when I read this message, you see God said, what is sicknesses? Oh, I'm coming to take off all the sicknesses and demonic power that have, that have uh, 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 taken hold of my children. God gonna break yokes. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you something. Prepare your life. Prepare yourself. God is coming to town. <laughs> God is coming to town. Amen. I say, God. <laughs> ah, God is coming to town. God is coming to town. Sister Julia, God is coming to town. Ah, brother Charles, God is coming to town. You think God, God ain't gonna go to Togo? My brother, get ready. Oh, he's, he's there. <laughs> hey, but, but the, the Lord should do loss. You will not forever be hidden. Don't worry. You will not be hidden forever. The Lord is just preparing you in his school. And very soon you, you, you start to see signs and wonders. So just get ready for God bursting through the change and setting you free. Ah, oh glory, oh glory, give God a clap of you know, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, he's alive, Jesus delivers, it is Jesus who heals, Jesus who delivers, Jesus who blesses, Jesus cares, I tell you, the, the message I'm going to bring, okay, before I do that, let me let me read you something. Okay, let me read something. Just, just preliminary stuff. Uh, let me read the thing from, from what? From February 8th of God calling. Because the message has everything to do with this also. February 8th of God calling. Before I read the Lord's message. Ah, uh, you see, when we were singing, uh, there is a blood, or uh, there is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel vein. See, the joy that burst through my being, huh? the joy that flooded my soul. And I, 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 I plead with you, listen, I plead with, 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 with you. The Lord wants to have access to you directly and talk to you. The God in whom you believe, the God who saved you, he didn't save you unless some, some so-called apostle mess you up. Are you hearing me? He didn't save you for some so-called prophet mess you up. You are to have an intimacy an intimate relationship with Jehovah God. He gave you free access by, ah, yes, God. Prosagoge, you remember the word prosagoge? Access, access to this grace wherein we stand. The Lord gave you access to come straight 
Ah, to the throne room, to the very throne of God. Every child of God has access to go to God and pour your heart to God and get some answers. Ah, All right, let me read this for you. He says here, you see, I'm coming there. We are coming there on me alone. You see, on me alone. That is the title. February 8th, God called him. On me alone. I am your Lord. Your supply. You see, you've been worrying. You've been thinking for your job to supply you with everything. Uh, how about if your job fails? <laughs> Ooh, boy, you're, 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 you're the one to say I mean how about if your job fails? Because I experienced it when I came to Insta first. Insta first. All right. There was a time. No, boy. See, before, before I moved to Insta, I was coming to, 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 to Michigan from New, New Jersey. Okay. I was coming. And brother, I came. The Lord bless all the time. Pastors, men of God, they wanted me to come to their churches and have revival. Oh, it was wonderful. Then when the Lord moved me here, that's it. The river dried up. No pastor want to hear of me no more. <laughs> I guess they thought I was coming to steal their sheep. <laughs> Brother, it was rough time. You hear me now? It was rough time. And one day I went to the, uh, what, to the place. What, what, what's the place that we used to go? To the cave. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went to the cave, the Assemblies of God Church, you know, in Insta. Okay, I went there, I sat down there to, to have some pity party. <laughs> I went to go and have pity party before the Lord because I, 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 I got a family, ain't no dime coming in. Are you hearing me? <laughs> oh, brothers. You want to walk with God? You got to have a testimony, okay, that deals with your walk with God. That's it, a testimony that is a personal relationship that God broke through to you and got hold of your attention that he alone can supply. I say you got to come to the place that you know that God alone can supply and must supply for you. If not, you're going down because men will fail you. Jobs will fail you. Everything will fail you. God, Jehovah, don't fail nobody. So here am I sitting down there in a pity party and the Lord just spoke to me all of a sudden. Uh, do you have to work for me uh, so that you, know, you, know, you, can, uh, you can get money? Do you have to preach so that you can get money? I said, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I was smart. I was telling God, God, but you said, you said he does preach the gospel shall not by the gospel. So I go to preach so that I can get money for my, for my family. But right now, Lord, I ain't nothing happening. So yeah, Lord, I must preach. He said, all right. How about if no doors are open? Like, then the Lord told, like, right now, I shut the doors on you. I shut the doors on you. And nobody going to call you until you learn this lesson. Whoa! <laughs> How about, what about right now, there's no call from pastors to, for you to go preach so that you, you can get a blessing. I ordain that they that preach the gospel <coughs> shall live by the gospel. But right now, if you ain't preaching and there's no money coming in, does that mean that I, the almighty Lord God, I cannot take care of you? That's the breakthrough I had. That's the breakthrough I had many years ago. Are you hearing me? If the doors are shut, if no church is calling you, if no invitation is coming, and you depend on your preaching so that you can get blessing, but right this thing right now is shut up. Does that mean that I, Almighty God, I cannot take care of you, brother? It 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 was like some light went on. The horror, horror. He says, listen. When you go, when I send you, you go and preach. Yes, the people will bless you. I said that in my word. 
But if I have not opened the door for you to go. You see, right now you're trying to find doors, but I shut all of them. <laughs> Woo! Ain't no door, brother. <laughs> I was getting, I, I was getting real hot. I'm blasting holy go, ain't no door opening. The Lord says, right now ain't no door. Does that mean that almighty God, whose servant you are, I cannot take care of you? Do you always have to preach? He said, hear me. You, you, when I send you to go and preach, all right, the people will bless you. If I have not sent you, you cannot go anywhere. If I don't send you, you see, that is why many, you know, ministries have become prostitutional ministries. Because they prostitute themselves and begging for doors to go preach. Prostitution. There's plenty of prostitution around in the pulpit. Because, because they are, they are pleading and begging and twisting arms for, for, for pastors to invite them. Are you hearing me? The Lord said, do you see what happens? They said, look around. From January to December, how many people are, are calling around for ministers to invite them to, to fill their, their, what, their calendar? All right, uh, uh, January, uh, I have to go to uh, Florida. All right, I, uh, the, okay, I can get my needs met. Uh, February, I need someone to, to invite me. So he called around, Pastor, uh, I, I got the Holy Ghost burning my soul. Uh, can you invite me to come into, to your church for one week? Some, some, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Then he check, check all the months. So all the months he set them up in advance. God ain't told him nothing. But he set up his own agenda. The Lord says, you can never do that. You can never do that. If I have not sent you, you don't go anywhere. And I can still take care of you. I learned this and I was freed from anxieties. From, from how will I take care of my family? I, oh, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't hearing me. Yeah, yeah, you ain't here. <laughs> I was free from that torment. Why? Now I was focused on Jesus Christ as the one who called me to be his servant. And therefore it is his responsibility. Do you read the word in, in God calling? He says, yeah, here. It is my responsibility. I died for you. I called you. It is my job to take care of you. You hear that? But we are, we are trying to plan our own way. I was delivered of that. And I had eternal peace. My ministry don't depend on what I do. My ministry depends on who I am and whose I am. Who I am with God and whose I am. I belong to God and I am with him. That's it. I ain't got no, no, no agenda, nobody making plans for me. Nobody calling around and arranging meetings. Oh no. The Lord alone can arrange meetings for me. That's it. I have to stay close to him. I have to know him. That's my, my, my number one responsibility to know the God who saved me. The God who saved me is able to care for me. Did he not die for me? So if he died for me, is it taking care of me that he cannot do? But people don't want to you know, believe him. All right? Yeah, listen, after today, you are going to change. After today. But it's your choice to say, yes, Lord, I want it. Yes, Lord, I want to walk with you. Yes, Lord, I want what you are talking to me about. If you want it, you have to change. Listen. By this, by the end of this week, the, of, of, of today and tomorrow, if you want God, all right, to bring you into what he says he wants to do, then you are going to, the first reaction, let me tell you in advance, your first reaction, if you want God, all right, to bring you into what he says he has planned to do with his people, then you are going to go on a fast. When you say yes, then go in the fast to make it sure. To tell God, yes, I am willing to even lay my soul down there and seek your face. You told me that I should surrender to you. Yes, Lord, I'm willing. And to show you that I'm willing, I'm willing to fast before you 
for this for this call of God to be solidified in my being. I'm willing to surrender to you and I'm willing to follow you. We can only follow God by the Holy Ghost guidance in our being. And you can only have the Holy Ghost guidance when fasting and prayer. The four pillars are doing their work. Are you hearing me? If a man, <coughs> you see, if you want God, you got to understand. Today you understand that the, the, you see, the ministry is not the work of man. It's not man's ministry. The ministry, the Lord has said, henceforth, no one does anything for God anymore. Concerning his church, concerning the ministry, no one does anything. The Lord God alone does what belongs to his church. He does it. But he will use people that he has chosen. He has called them forth and prepared them and led them to go and do what he wants done. You said what people used to do that they just get up and say, I'm, I'm going to start a ministry here. I'm going to do something for God here. I'm going to start a church here. He said, it's over. I didn't send them and they made a mess. It's over. The Lord alone will build his church. Hear ye me. The Lord alone is going to build his church. He will use people that are vessels in his hands. And you can be a vessel. That's what this message is all about. Are you willing to do what God says he wants you to do? All right. So let me, let me read this. It says, it says here, on me alone. I am your Lord, your supply. You must rely on me. Trust to the last uttermost limit. Woo! What does that remind you of? What does that, this very sentence, what, what person in the Bible does that remind you of? Abraham, Abraham. He went all the way to the last, the last hill he climbed, Mount, Mount Moriah. And right there to the last moment, he's going to stab the child and kill him. Abraham, Abraham, now I know you fear God. What? <laughs> Lord, what, what are you talking to me? Now you know I fear, I fear God? But how about all them years I've been walking to you? Did I not fear God? I said, well, this, this is what proves to me that you fear me. And you are willing to do anything I command you to do. So do not, do not, do not harm the child. I got me a, a ram. I knew I had a ram, but I wanted to test you. Put your faith to the, to the, to the strangest tested to see how far you can go. Believe in God. How far are you willing to go by faith? Believe in God. Because when you deal with him, it is all, all, all by faith. All by faith, brother. All by, that's why you got to know him intimately well. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in your being, you can never live by faith all the way. You will compromise and then you will rely on your five senses again. The moment you rely on me, 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 brother, down the drain you go. Says here, trust to the last uttermost limit. Trust and be not afraid. You must depend on divine power only. Depend on what? On your bank account? <laughs> listen, God is wonderful. You see, listen, please. No, no, but listen to me. When you're going to work with God, there has to be some work done secretly by God on the inside. He will do a work in your being, a work that will take away doubt from your heart. He has to banish doubt from your being. He has to do that by the grace of God. In your continuous fellowship with him, he destroys doubt in your being. You are taken out of doubt into living faith. Uh, you are taken out of doubt into living faith. 
And you have to allow God. A living faith work is done by your constant communion with the Lord. You see, you're not going to say I'm Amina because you all don't want to. <laughs> you have to commune with the Lord daily. This abide, oh, abiding, that is what prepares your inner life for a long journey based on faith and faith alone. You must be prepared by God. On the inside, your inner life, see, the anointing that you will need, see, we are, we are going to the anointing, tomorrow we'll, we'll continue. But the anointing, the unction, that will take you into the very realm of divine holiness, the anointing will not come except by constant abiding, constant abiding, constant communion. Make God all that you need. See, y'all don't want to go there. Y'all don't want to go to the place when God is all you need. When you, do you know that God can take care of you? No, you, you don't believe it. Uh, uh, have you come to the place where your teaching work cannot take care of you? Uh, have you come there? <laughs> where your teacher's pay ain't going nowhere? Oh, no, you're there. <laughs> you have to believe that God alone can take care of you. It's not an easy lesson to learn, but the Holy Ghost will teach you. You see, when, how can I help you? Tell me how, how I can help you. What can I talk about so I can help you? <laughs> you see, the Lord will sustain you when he's teaching you faith. He will sustain you by his right hand. Of power. He will sustain you. Alright. Okay. When you start. You start. You see a little demon. You're scared. You see a little problem. You're scared. You see a little more, you know, bills come there. You don't know. You're scared. But the Lord will work you through that. Until no matter what happens. You ain't scared no more. <laughs> no matter what happens. You are going forward with Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ knows it all. He knew all the problems before he said, let's go. He knew all you are going to encounter before he said, let's go. Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. All right, Abraham? Yes, Lord. And I will establish my covenant between me and you. So keep going. Don't be afraid. No, there's no fear. In faith ah, and love, ah, there's no fear. God is true. God is real. The reality of God has not dawned in the hearts of many people. That's the problem. Many believe God, but their, their belief is in the head. It's an intellectual belief. It's not a heart heart conviction, inner being conviction, not a mental conviction, mental assent is what people think they believe. People, be, oh yeah, 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 I believe, I believe, I believe. Oh no, your heart ain't there. When you believe, you stand. When you believe, you know. All right. Trust, trust and not be afraid. You must depend on divine power only. I have not forgotten you. That's the whole problem. He will put you in some situations and then he ain't saying a word. Woo! Lord, where are you? Lord, where are you? Hey, 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 hey. Right. <laughs> oh, you scared good. <laughs> you scared good. Did he not sleep in the boat? Oh, he did. And what was going on? Storms everywhere. Oh, hi, hey, Peter. Hi, hey, hey, Peter. Let, let's go and wake him up. Peter. Hey, hold on, hold on. Oh, no, Peter. We, we're going to die. He's going to die too. <laughs> when, if we don't wake him up, you say, hey, why didn't you wake me up? And we are now, we are on, on, all in the, we are in the waters. We are all, all dying. Oh, no. He <laughs> said, listen. Lord, don't you care that we are all perishing? 
that these storms are coming. Don't you care? Oh, Peter, there's some storm. Oh, yeah, I knew there was some, there was some storm. I told you, let us go. I knew the storm was coming. I did that so that you, you will learn your weaknesses. You will do certain things just to expose your unbelief. You will put you in certain situations to expose your unbelief. You thought you believed God. You, you thought you were sorry. I believe him. I believe him. And then he scared you a little bit. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Lord, Lord. Oh, Lord, this is not fair. <laughs> so let's go on. <clears throat> I have not forgotten you. Your help is coming. You shall know and realize my power. Okay, it's a daily walk. I'm telling you, faith is a learning faith is a daily walk. You have to walk with the Lord until your mind has been subdued and captured by the Spirit of God. Because your mind is the most scary part of your body. Your mind is scared, good. Your mind is scared because you're looking for answers. You don't find answers, but he scares you. He, he blows the alarm, brother. I don't know what we're going to do. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. <laughs> Your mind is very, oh boy, he's scared. The mind is scared. And yet he roam around looking for help. <laughs> oh, yes, God. How many times you, 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 you know, you was on your bed and you was planning how to solve some problem. <laughs> How many times you was lying down on your bed and you scared, good, you troubled and worried, still planning how you're going to solve that problem that you cannot solve. And you, you don't want to turn it over to God. Because God may tell you to do something that you don't want to do. Ooh. <laughs> Learning to walk with, with God in faith is not an easy one. It's not easy. But they, they who persevere daily, they are brought over the hump of unbelief and they land in the realm of glory, in the realm of fearing nothing. Why? In my innermost being, I know that 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 I know Jesus Christ will never leave me alone. But people don't know that. You got to know that you know. I say you got to know that you know that you know. That you know that you know that you know. You know more than you know. <laughs> I have not forgotten you. Your help is coming. You shall know and realize my power. Endurance is faith tried almost to breaking point. Has your faith been ever tested and tried to breaking point? Has your faith gone this far with Christ to the point of breaking? And you know that if you don't stand, you're going to collapse. And you can't go no more. And the Lord shows up to strengthen you. And he pulls you through. Have you seen Rich House? Did you ever read Rich House? So Rich, if you can't do what I'm asking you to do, why not, you know, ask God for help? Are you willing to be made willing? Ooh. <laughs> Lord, I will. Make me willing. Did, the, did God not pull him through? Did the Lord not pull him through and allow him to surrender his will to God? He says, endurance is faith tried almost to breaking point. You must wait. Whoa. And trust. Ah. And hope. Oh. And join me. Wait and trust and hope and rejoice in me. You must not depend on man, but on me. On me, your strength, your hope, your supply. Brother, it's a beautiful song. <laughs> it's a beautiful song, but not, 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 not easily sung. <laughs> it's a beautiful song that you can't just sing easily. He says here, yeah, you must not depend on man. So you must wait and trust and hope and joy in me. 
You must not depend on man, but on me. On me, your strength, your help, your supply. This is the great test. That's where we're going. Everyone will face this. If you want to serve God, you face this. If you want to walk close to God, you face this great test. The great test of waiting upon God until he tells you to start. To start. Who was the one in the Bible who failed this great test? Was it not Saul? Was it not King Saul? Did, did he pass the great test? I mean, hallelujah. I say here. This is the great test. Am I your supply or not? As a fields, you answer this question. Because you are gonna, you are gonna face this. You, you are you 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 will face it. But there will there will come a time that God alone can pull you through. Uh, if he don't do that, you cannot depend on him. If God does not show you that when, when you are at your wit's end, he can step in and pull you out. If he doesn't show you, you ain't gonna go far. But he has to, he has to. He has to reveal himself to you when it seems everything is, is falling down. Ah. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Who, who, who is our example? That old man, that, that, that 99 year old man, that, that was a young man too in the spirit. He said, when reason for, a human reason for hope, was all gone. It's over. Abraham, God failed you. It's over. Abraham, give up. Abraham, hey, God ain't coming no more. Abraham, you, you waited all these years. God ain't coming. Are you not tired of waiting? That, that, that's the song of the devil. He's, he's singing good to you. He says, God, <laughs> when God, God seems to have forgotten that he told you to do something, wait for him, and God ain't showing up. They're like, yeah, yeah, he told you, come, he ain't coming. He ain't coming, go do your own thing, man. God, God knows that. God knows that when he wakes and he don't come, a man can go do, he's talking some, some good song to you. And then you two, you two, as, as <laughs> some bull you are, say, yeah, 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 that boy, it is true. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah, I know, I, I know, I know the word. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. You know the word, but God ain't commanded you to go forth. You know the word, but God ain't commanded you to go forth. Are you hearing? Brethren, it's not an easy training. But God is faithful. God will train you good. Because, if you see, see, see I, know, I know what is happening to, to us. Certain things are happening, you know, to, you know, to us. Okay, right now, once in a while, it used to be every single night the Lord would pay us visit. Every single night he would talk. Every single night he would bring messages. I got boxes of messages right there. Plenty of them. But since the beginning of 2022, and then coming all the way now, now he has, he has planned when he comes. He says things, things are changing. And I'm going to be gone. And yet I'm not gone. I am right here with you. I am right here with you. I live here with you. You have nothing to be afraid, but you will not hear from me. But if, if you don't hear from me, don't mean that I don't care about you. I'm not watching on what goes on. All right? But I'm going to watch as to how what you learn from me, you can work it out. See, that's the training. What you learn from me, I'm going to watch you work it out. I'm going to say a word. Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. Okay? I'm watching you. But I'm not saying a word. <laughs> That's the most difficult part. But you see, as you are watching, you got to believe that he is with you. Because he's teaching you to believe without seeing him. You see, this is faith. This is faith teaching. God teaches faith. He teaches it by himself. He teaches it through your circumstances that he organizes for you. He will arrange situations and put you in. And watch and how you're going to solve. Remember, when you're walking with the Lord, 
All right, and troubles come from nowhere. The first reaction is so important. How do you react to situations when you ain't heard from God? You see that? How do you react when trouble comes? What is your first reaction? Oh my. Oh hey. Oh hey. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. When trouble comes, Lord, I thank you. I know you are in charge. And therefore I'm not scared. I know you know what's going on. See, does God not know before anything happens to you? Does he know or know or what? Does he know everything before anything happens? He allows it and he arranges situations at times by himself and puts you in there to see your reaction. You see, to see whether you're going to consult with him, whether you're going to turn to him, whether you're going to rely on the Holy Ghost, you know, wisdom, or what are you going to do it on your own? On your own, thy own is what God is trying to deliver you from. Your own. Your own mind. Your own abilities. Your own education. Your own BBZY. Your own is God always you know, seeking to deliver you out of. Because when you come to Jesus, it's not by your own. It is by him. In him we live and move and have our being. Not in ourselves. Ah, we depend on you. Holy Spirit. We have no power of our own. I say we depend on you. Holy Spirit. We have no Oh, power of our own. I say we have no, no power of our own, my Lord. We have no power of our own. I depend on you, Holy Spirit. We have no, oh, power of our own. Will you learn that song and sing it daily? Because you need it. Because that's the lesson. To depend on him. Because you have no power of your own. If you resort to your own power, you will fail. You got to trust the Lord. All right? Okay, so let's go on. I'll be reading the message very soon. It says here. This is the great test. Am I your supply or not? Am I the one that can take care of you or not? You have to, you have to answer this question. In your heart. In the confidence of the Holy Ghost in your heart. Can you answer and, and tell, tell the Lord, yes. Yes. I know you are my supply. Can you say that to the Lord? Because that's what, it, that's what it is. Ah, am I your supply or not? Every great work for me has had to have this great test time. You hear that? Every great, you know, it was amazing. When we were coming, we were talking about the, uh, John G. Lake. This man was a businessman. You know that, right? A businessman, insurance man. This, um, he was rich. He was blessed. He was working with the Lord, but, but he was, you know, doing his own business. Okay? And, and he was blessed. And then very soon the Lord told him, go and give up your job. Give it up, sell it. And then he said, now prepare yourself. I want you now when you sell your job and everything else, now you're going to do three weeks. Three weeks reviver in the, in the, in, in the Midwest. I think in the Missouri or something. Go and do three weeks revival. And then after that, get ready for Africa. Right there. Boom, 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 boom. That's it. Are you hearing me? That's how God works when you are ready for him to send you. When you ain't ready, he puts you in some situations. Testing, finding out how do you react? How do you solve things? Where is the word of God in your situation? How do you apply the word of God to solve your situation? 
Or do you depend on people? Do you depend on you to solve the situation without God, without the word, without Holy Ghost counsel? How do you handle problems? He has to make sure that you handle problems the way he wants you to handle problems through the word of God. If you ain't done that, no, he can he cannot use you. Because when 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 the push comes you know, comes to the shove, all right, you will you will go and rely on something that God didn't tell you to go and rely on. If God does not know your faithfulness, your dependability that he can depend on you, regardless of what's going on, you will always look to God. If God is not convinced of that, you ain't gonna serve him. You, you see the man called Saul? You see the man called Saul? He's in the Bible. When the push came to the shove, did, did, did he succeed? He failed God. He did something that God did not ask anybody else to do except the priest. And he took things into his own hands. Brother, you, you come to know when you walk on the door that you have to reference and send everything to heaven's counsel. To heaven's counsel for answer. You cannot go to earthly counsels for answer. When you are going to serve God, you have to send all your requests to heaven's counsel. The Lord God himself will answer you for the things you are asking as to whether the, the heaven wants you to go to the left or to the right, or to wait, or to go. Heaven has to answer that for you. Not on your own. Brother, it's a danger when you go on your own. That's a problem in ministers. That, you know, that, that thing that they have made it, they've all of a sudden, boom. God, God they didn't build it. They built it on disobedience. You don't want to build anything on, on, on disobedience. But it will crumble. All right? So he says here, ah, this is the great test. Am I your supply or not? Every great work for me has had to have this great test time. Possess your souls in patience and rejoice. Can you do that? But when you are walking by faith, you are going to learn this. You are going to learn to possess your soul, okay, in patience. Wait. <laughs> you are going to learn to wait. God ain't said a word. Don't force yourself to go and do anything. Unless you are not God's servant, then you can do what you want. But you, if you are his servant, oh no, you have no right to go and do anything that you have not cleared with him. Ah, it's a possess your souls in patience and rejoice. You must wait until I show you the way. I mean, you know why I'm reading this? Thing? Because after the message today, some of you are going to have to make this choice. Some of you are going to have to make this choice. Are you going to wait for God? Are you going to surrender and then wait for him? Are you going to now connect with heaven so that the Holy Ghost will be the spirit that leads you? So it's here. Possess your souls in patience and rejoice. You must wait until I show the way. Heaven itself cannot contain more joy than that soul knows. That soul knows when after the waiting test, when after that soul has waited, and I have said, yes, you finished your waiting test. The joy that comes into that soul. He said, heaven, ah, uh, listen, it says here, uh, heaven itself cannot contain more joy than that soul knows. When after the waiting test, I crown that soul victor. <laughs> when after you pass the waiting test, because he will say, wait, listen. I, I, this is my 47th year of walking with God. All right? At the 40th year, the Lord you know, came to us again and said, now, all right, I'm going to be in charge of your life. I want all of you now to meet me every night. 
The last seven years has been under the direct control of the Holy Spirit by the Lord God himself. Brother, you don't understand. Okay? It is the grace of God that is coming through us to you. It is the mercy of God coming through us. It is what God has poured in our being that we are bringing to you. Show you the ways of the Lord. Okay? After, after 40 years, the Lord said, the call I gave you 40 years ago is still pending. <laughs> after 40 years, brother, I've gone through the nations. I've done some mighty things, some miracle signs and wonders. God did all these things. So that's not the call yet. After 40 years, I have not begun the call. Now I'm, to, I'm, I'm going to prepare you now for the call I gave you, he said. And it's been seven years. <laughs> it's, been, it's been seven years since we started being under the direct rule of Jesus Christ himself. Coming to talk to us. Come, he said, I must walk with you. He asked us the question, uh, do, do, you, do you all believe you can walk with me? Oh, boy, we was crazy. We didn't know what we was talking about. And then we said, yes. <laughs> oh, brother. We said yes to him. Yeah, we walk, we walk with you. <laughs> Bro, boy, we bumbling and bumbling and bumbling. <laughs> brother, it's, it's we said, but I asked you, I asked you, would you all, do you think you all can work? He said, remember, I asked you this before we started our journey. And you all said yes. So now let's go. <laughs> let's keep on going. <laughs> you ain't finished. Do whatever I tell you to do. Do whatever I tell you to do. Everything depends on your obedience. Are you hearing me now? And the last thing that you know, he has spoken to us that you know, before this message. That, and that has given me hope. He said, now you should wait. You should wait because my father will send the fire from heaven upon you. Ah. Hey. You should wait for the fire from heaven. He said, you should wait. He said, the fire will fall before you can go. So wait. After seven years waiting, I'll wait again. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait. All right? I didn't die for the people. He died and he knows. You see, that's the whole point about Jesus Christ and man. Jesus Christ teaching you and men teaching you. That's the difference. Because Jesus Christ, you tell you wait. You don't wait, you cannot go. If I don't approve your going, you ain't going nowhere. Man, look at you here. Yeah, you're an apostle. Okay, okay, go to Africa and then go and do some stuff. Go and go and do that. Go and prepare. Go to some missionary school and go and make money. You know, I know, ask for people to support you. Well, people to support you. God can support you. God can take you to Africa all by himself. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. When the Lord teaches you, wait. Learn to do Why are you in a hurry to go and save the world? When you didn't die for the world. <laughs> he who died for the world is not in a hurry. He's preparing you for himself. He knows what exactly you are going to encounter. And he prepares you to overcome them when they turn their wild attacks on you. Ah, Jesus. He says, heaven itself cannot contain more joy than that soul knows when, after the waiting test, I crown it victor. Hallelujah. Then he says, but no disciple of mine can be victor who does not wait until I give the command or the order to start. Are you hearing me now? No disciple of mine will be victorious. Because you know, you know, you know what it means. I send you there. You know, when you go there, you are conquering. You are a conqueror before you go. I train you to be a conqueror before you go. 
So when you meet them, you're, you just, you just, you know, blow them aside. You're going forward. Because you've been taught by me. You've been raised up under me. Okay. Did Jesus not, not, not spend 30 years? 30 years for three, three and a half years ministry. 30 years of waiting, brother. I, 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 I would have hidden and done my ministry aside, brother. <laughs> In the night, I got some disciples. I know I'm Jesus. In the night, got some disciples. Come, come, I'm going. Then I think the daytime, ah, we, are, we are going. Oh, no, he didn't do nothing. He waited. He waited. Can you wait? The guy is, 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 is supposed to come and save us. And he has come. And 30 years gone by, he ain't done nothing. Oh, what, what, what's wrong with him? Bro, maybe he's backslidden. Maybe he this, maybe he that. Oh no, it was all planned. 30 years is the height of youth. The man is strong. He's ready now to engage in God's work. Was it not 30 years that David became king? You see that? That's the age. The age of maturity. Where you can, under, under God, do his work properly. All right, so he said here. Ah, say so you cannot, so, uh, but no disciple of mine can be victor who does not wait until I give the order to start. You cannot be anxious if you know that I am your supply. I'm your supply, so why are you anxious? I will supply. Are you hearing me? So I read this because you are going to need this. As you learn to now, okay, raise up your hand to the Father God and says, yes, what you are asking me to do, I will surrender to you. All right? So with this now, let's go to the message. Ah, yes, God. Let's go to the message that I told you the Father God is going to give you a commission. Ah, yes, God. This is August 18, 6.47 a.m. Yes, God. August 18. The Lord speaks. Here is the song. No power can compare to you. And no one can be compared to you. Oh, Lord. You alone are almighty. No power can compare to you and no one can be compared to you. Oh Lord, you alone are almighty. Oh Lord, you are almighty. Oh Lord, you are almighty. Indeed, Lord, you alone are almighty. I say, no power can compare to you and no one can be compared to you. Oh Lord, you alone are almighty. Oh Lord, you are almighty. Oh Lord, you are almighty. Indeed, Lord, you alone are almighty. We sang the song, it's in our language. That's, that's why I translated it over here. The message itself. Now, these are three messages. And each one has an aspect that the Lord brings. The first one is 25 pages. Okay. The second one is about three pages. And the third one, about six pages. And with the third one comes the command to his children. So today you will be hearing the, the Lord commanding the Father God himself and asking that certain things should be conveyed to his children and that this is what he, he wants from his children, that they should all do it for him. Yes, God. Right? So the first message, <clears throat> yes, 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 that's it. <clears throat> yes, that's it indeed. No power can compare to you and no one can be compared to you. Yes, that's it indeed. Yes, I say, 
that shit indeed. Now, just look around this whole world. Yes, you yourselves, just look around this whole world and tell me. Yes, tell me if there is any power that can be compared to me. Yes, tell me. Yes, look around and tell me. Yes, I say to you four. No, that's because we are four. I, I say to you four with whom I am speaking. Tell me. Yes, I say tell me. I am talking to all four of you. I say look around and tell me if there is anyone. Who can compare to me? Yes, yes, it is I myself. Yes, I, the Lord God, the almighty God. Yes, the almighty Lord God to whom no power can be compared and with whom no one can ever be compared. From nation to nation, throughout all the nations, from one end to the other end, from north to south, and from east to west, there is no power that can be compared to his. And there is no one that possesses a power that surpasses that of the almighty eternal Lord God. Yes, the almighty eternal Lord God. The almighty eternal Lord God. Who is your God? Whose name is I am that I am. Yes, this marvelous name. Have you heard of it? Have you heard of a name like that before? <laughs> I am that I am. That means he's almighty. He's the almighty one. The ever abiding, all powerful and, and, and complete God who is deficient in nothing and who is omnipotent. And omnipresent. He is someone who is self-existent. Complete and self-sufficient. All by himself. No one controls him. He has it all. Yes, yes, yes. He is indeed the self-sufficient one who has it all. No one controls him. No, no. No one rules over him. He is alone. And he alone is the all-sufficient one. Yes, the independent one who controls all and who possesses all power, all might, all authority, all dominion, before whom no one can stand when he bestirs himself and rises to action. No, when he rises to action, no one indeed can stand before him. Yes, indeed, it is true. The almighty eternal Lord God is the living God who lives. He is awesome and fearful. That name, I am that I am, is a fearful name. And indeed, you must fear him. Yes, indeed, the living God who lives is to be feared. And you must indeed learn to fear him. I say to you, do not play with him. And do not take him lightly. Or else you will regret someday. You know that as for me, the almighty eternal Lord God, I do not lie. There is no lie in me. I always tell the truth. I do not discriminate and I deal fairly with people. I do not turn a deaf ear to the truth. I do not take sides in settling issues. No, no, no. I am just. I am a God of justice. Yes, a God of justice indeed. Then, then, then he will say this. He said, now, okay, I am not hearing your voice, someone among us. You see, I tell you, God, God wants you to agree with him, to recognize that he's talking, get involved when he's talking. Because he told us when you are, when the word of God is coming, the way it can penetrate your heart is you agree with the word. Especially when the messenger of God comes from God, not his own mind. I'm not bringing my message. So he was, he was saying to one of us, I'm not hearing your voice. Let me hear you. Now I said, I am a just God. Yes, a God of justice. 
but you should not take things for granted and play with me. No, do not play with me and take me for granted or else you will regret someday and you will experience a rude awakening. Now, I have told you before, have I not? That I am the God who is good and who also is troublesome. You, you know that name? The God who is good and who is troublesome. <laughs> yes, I am good and I am also troublesome. It seems to me that you have forgotten about that name, good and troublesome. <laughs> and indeed, you have forgotten so many things I have told you. Some even do not remember any of the many words I have spoken to you. Yes, some of you do not remember anything from all the words I have spoken to you. Yes, it is true, because I know what I'm saying and what I'm talking about. Now, if I were to ask a simple question about what you have learned from all I have given to you, it will be trouble for you. You may not remember anything, much less tell me some of the things I have given to you. Yes, it is true. Yes, it is true indeed. Now, remember that the eternal Lord God is true. He is a, is a God of truth. He alone, he alone is the one you can believe and trust. And when you believe him and trust him, everything else goes well for you. Simply because he alone possesses power and authority over all power. The power to do great and mighty things it is the eternal Lord God alone who possesses that. And he is the one who gives wisdom to people and, give, and also gives them understanding. And yet you tend to behave and conduct yourself as if it is your own wisdom or your own understanding. No, no, no. It is the eternal Lord God himself who gave you the wisdom and the understanding. Yes. It is the Lord God himself who gave, who gave it all to you. And whoever is wise and will learn to humble himself before the Lord God, the eternal Lord God will use him to do great and mighty things. Yes, he will do great and mighty things through him simply because he loves people. Yes, the eternal Lord God loves the human beings whom he has made in his own image and likeness. And that is the reason why he gives them wisdom and understanding. Now, do you think the eternal Lord God does things for the sake of doing? He gives them wisdom and understanding and the mind to do great things. Yes, yes, yes. For their own lives in this world. Yes, indeed, it is true. And he also does it so that he can commune and fellowship with them. Yes, fellowship with them so he will be pleased with them. Yes, pleased to see his world which is populated with human beings. Yes, indeed, it is true. Yes, it is true. And so now, you should not try to conduct yourselves as if you are the ones who carry, carry on what goes on and get things done. Don't behave that you are the one who, you know, who get things done. Don't behave like that. No, no, no. If you are wise, give the glory and the praise to the eternal Lord God. If you know something, give the glory and the praise to the eternal Lord God. Yes, yes, yes. If you are able to do something, do not boast with it and try to exalt yourself and throw your weight around. As if it was you who did anything. No, no, no. It is the eternal Lord God. It is indeed the eternal Lord God who gave you wisdom and understanding and the mind to do it. Yes, it is the eternal Lord God who does all things. Now, even you yourselves who have believed in me, if you would only listen to my voice, and would obey me and humble yourselves before me. Nothing could hinder the great and mighty things which I will do with you and through you. 
Uh, you yourself would see for yourselves. You see it. It is simply because the eternal Lord God, who is your God, he desires nothing and is looking for nothing from you except obedience. Yes, obedience. That is all he desires from you. But do you not see it? I ask you, do you not see it? Do you not see how? Listen to this. He's asking you questions. Do you not see it? Do you not see it? Do you not see how the son walked with me? Now, who is talking? Do you not see how the son walked with me? Do you not see it when you read my word? Don't you see it in my word? Don't you see it? I ask you. Don't you see when you read the word of God how the Son of God walked humbly and in obedience, in quiet and calmness of spirit. He obeyed as he daily walked humbly with the Father. If I have not asked him to carry out anything, he simply waited on me patiently and calmly. Did you hear that? If I have not asked the son to do something for me, he don't do nothing. What did he say? I can of my own self do nothing. But you and I, we can of ourselves do something. And we forget that we are walking with the, with the almighty God. We forget we are walking with, with Jehovah God and then we try to do something. We do our plans without him. Jesus Christ will do nothing except what the Father commanded him to do. I said, now, do you have Jesus in your heart? Amen. Is he living inside you? And then why do you ignore what he says? Why do you think you are smarter than Jesus? <laughs> Don't you see it in my word? Don't you see it? I ask you. Don't you see when you read the word of God, how the son of God walked humbly and in obedience, in quiet and calmness of spirit, he obeyed as he daily walked humbly with the father. If I have not asked him to carry out anything, he simply waited on me patiently and calmly. Yes, indeed. Patiently and calmly he waited upon me and he committed his whole being. Notice the testimony of the father about the son. And he committed his whole being to me in complete and total obedience and dependence upon me. Are you here? Do you understand what the, how the Christian life is supposed to be? Is that what you see in churches? Is that how Jesus Christ conducts himself as, as ministers do not do? Are you, are, are you hearing? He committed his whole being to me in complete and total obedience and dependence upon me. Did he not say I can only do what I see my father do. If my father ain't, ain't said anything to me, I don't do nothing. And I what? I, my father loves me. What? Because I keep his commandments. Jesus kept the father's commandments. Except that my father gave me words that I should speak. You they don't give you nothing that you speak. You don't have no word from no, no, no Holy Ghost that you're talking. He's making your words the truth. Ah, says here, follow, follow this one. This, this is detailed and it's precise. Okay, and we'll come to the end of it. He will come back and tackle another aspect. And then he'll come back and then give the command for his children. Says here, he committed his whole being, your Lord, committed his whole being to me in complete and total obedience and dependence upon me. Yes, he committed himself to me, the eternal Lord God. Yes, to me, the almighty eternal Lord God. And I say, 
The almighty eternal Lord God is awesome and fearful indeed. But that is how it is. That is how it is today too. What Jesus did, that is how it is today too. Remember that the son has been given to you too. Was the son given to us? Has Christ been given to us? Is, 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 is he not the gift of the father to us? And where does he live? And where do we live? He lives in us and we live in him. All right. Remember that the son has been given to you too. Yes, he has been given to you as the one whom you should look to and pattern your life after him. He has come and set the example for you so you could pattern your life after his example which he left for you. And so because of the example he has left for you, no one can say that he or she does not know how to live the new life. The father said, because of what the son did for you and left the example as to how to live, no one can say he does not know how to live the Christian life. You see right here? No one can say that he or she does not know how to live the new life and how to conduct yourself. Now, have I not told you that before? Yes, indeed, I have told you that before. Yes, 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 I have told you, told you this before. The Lord has revealed that to you before. You see, he, he calls the Son, the Lord. I have told you, I have told you before, the Lord has revealed this to you. Revealed that to you before. How you ought to lead the life. Yes, the new life. Yes, it is true. It is true indeed. And so what I want to tell you is that you should humble yourselves. Yes, humble yourselves and know that the eternal Lord God deserves respect and reverence and honor. Yes, indeed. He deserves to be honored. Ah, yes, God. He deserves to be honored and respected. Yes, your Lord must must be honored and respected. Yes, honor, respect, and reverence must be offered unto your Lord. Who is your Lord? Jesus. Okay, so who is telling you to give reverence and honor to the Lord? Okay. The Father God said, honor, honor the Son. Amen. So here, ah, I say unto you to honor him, to respect him, to be and to humble yourself before him. Yes, that's it indeed. Yes, that's it. And remember that it is the almighty eternal Lord God who will do everything. Yes, yes, yes. Has the Lord not revealed it to you also? Has the Lord, listen to what he said. You see, you see, the father and the son interchanging, right? The father will talk about himself and talk about the son. That's what is happening here. Says here, ah, let me go back to here. It says, I say unto you to honor him, the Lord, to respect him, the Lord, and to humble yourselves before him. Yes, that's it indeed. Yes, that's it. And remember that it is the almighty eternal Lord God who will do everything. Yes, yes, yes. Has the Lord not revealed it to you also? That nowadays no one does anything for God? Has the Son not told us? Has the Lord Christ not told us? That nowadays no one does anything more? And the Father is saying this thing. Also again, that it is the Almighty God that does everything. Oh, have you forgotten that word the Lord told you? I myself, I am a witness. You hear that? Who is I myself? The Father God said, I am a witness that the Lord told you. The Lord told you that nowadays nobody does anything. Well, for God, it is God who does everything. 
He said, I myself, I the Father God myself, I bear witness that the Lord told you that. Ah, I myself, I am a witness. Yes, I bear witness to the fact that the Lord has revealed that to you before that, uh, before that nowadays no one does anything any longer for the Lord God Almighty. No, no, no. Humble yourselves and leave everything in the hands of the eternal Lord God. The Almighty. Believe and trust Him. Yes, just believe Him and trust Him. The same way the Son believed and trusted the Almighty Eternal Lord God. Yes, yes, yes. And He believed His commandments and did those things that pleased me. <laughs> oh, he, kept, he kept the Almighty God in a commandment and did the things that pleased me. Okay, he says here, Did I not exalt him? Did I not exalt your Lord Christ? Yes, I exalted him indeed. In the same way, I will exalt you too. Isn't that something? Yes, 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 it is true indeed. And so I say, honor and respect the almighty eternal Lord God. Yes, honor and respect the almighty eternal Lord God. And you should also honor, respect and reverence the son. Also, yes, honor and reverence the son because the work he did is huge and immense. Yes, the work your Lord carried out is tremendous indeed. You now have been given the Holy Ghost as a result of the work that he did. You now have been given the Holy Spirit who is your helper and advocate. Now, fear and tremble in his presence. Fear and tremble in the presence of the Holy Ghost. The triune God is to be feared, is to be honored, and to be reverenced. Now, fear and tremble in his presence and honor him and give him all the respect and reverence he deserves. Simply because of the great and mighty works he does. The great works that the Holy Ghost does. Okay. He is the one to do everything that needs to be done. In every work that you will do, he is the one. The Holy Ghost is the one who will help you do it. When you talk about helping doing, you know it's the Holy Ghost that helps. Okay. He is the one who will help you do it. And he is also the one who will conform you to the image and likeness of Christ. Who do that? The Holy Ghost. He will reveal Christ in you and help you resemble your Lord. Yes, it is true indeed. That it is true indeed that the Lord is beautiful. Ah, indeed. Yes, indeed. Ah, ah, he's beautiful. And full of glory. Ah, ah, he's the glorious one. Full of glory. The glory owner. <laughs> yes, covered with glory. Your Lord, covered with glory and light. Ah, ah, indeed, he's gorgeously beautiful. You cannot behold him with the naked eye. You cannot, you can't, you say, you can see him only and behold him in his beauty and majestic glory with the eyes of faith. Right now, you cannot see the Lord. All right? Okay? He's, he's too dazzling. If, in fact, the Lord has to tell us. He said, listen, I humble myself to come and visit you. Okay? Because if I came in my majestic glory, none of you can survive. <laughs> and, and so, I come in my humility I don't bring my, whoa, the Lord is, is going somewhere and you don't have angels in accompanying him or going with him. He said, no, I come to visit my family, my children. I don't need nobody coming with me. <laughs> I'm coming to visit my brethren. Oh, brother. It is a beautiful thing to know how Jesus 
yearns to be one with his, with, with his brothers. We don't give him time. We don't even want him. We are so deceived by the world that we think our family is the world. My Lord, your family is the triune God. <laughs> ah, yes, God. Say, she, you cannot behold him with a naked eye. You can only see and behold him in his beauty and majestic glory with the eyes of faith. If you walk in the flesh, you cannot see him in his majestic beauty and glory. It is in the spirit and through faith that you can see him in his sweet attractiveness and his delightful loveliness. You must live in the spirit and walk in the spirit so you can see him and his majestic beauty and dazzling loveliness. You must, you see that he's encouraging us to walk in the spirit so we can see our Lord. You need to go to church so you can see your Lord. He said, walk in the Holy Ghost. Seek him so you can have access to him. Oh, When you hear that God describing the beauty of the son of your Lord. <laughs> He said, you know, he said, the beauty, the way he, he talks it in our language, it drives you crazy. <laughs> so he said, he's so beautiful, so glorious. One day you will see him. Ah, yes, God. So he said, here, it is in the spirit and through faith that you can see him in his sweet attractiveness and his delightful loveliness. You must live in the spirit and walk in the spirit so you can see him and his majestic beauty and dazzling loveliness. You must walk in the spirit so you can do everything you need to do. If you stay in the spirit and live in the spirit, then you will, then you will be enabled to see and experience in your lives everything that the father promised you. In your Lord. Yes it is true. Because nowadays. I have given you everything. That belongs to you. But it's, it is to your Lord. Yes I have put everything. Into the hands of your Lord. Whoever will be obedient. Whoever will live the life. And do everything. That pleases the Lord. You will receive your portion. Your Lord. Will abide in you. And I too, I promise that I will also come and abide in you. Yes, 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 indeed it is true. But you do not really seek him. All you do is just go to church. You do not really seek him. No, no, you do not seek him and the promised blessings. I told you to ask, to seek, and to knock. But you are not asking. Nor seeking, nor knocking. You must ask and seek. Yes, you must ask and seek as I told you. What I told you, what I told you to do, that is ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, knock and keep on knocking. That is true indeed. And it is a very true word of promise. Which if you believed and obeyed it in your life, what the word of God has said would come to pass for you. The word of God is not a lie. The word of God will not deceive you because it is not a word that deceives. It is not a word that deceives. It is true. Is the word of God not Christ himself? Yes, it is Christ himself who has been given to you as the word. Uh, and so when you take hold of the word, it is a person you have taken hold of. Yes, it is a person you are receiving and you take hold of. What did Paul talk about? God revealing what? His son. Not a word. His son in his being. So he can, well, he can preach him. That is the reason why the Apostle Paul has such brilliant revelations of Christ in the word of God. Why? Because he did not, he did not preach doctrines. He preached a person. 
in whom dwells all the doctrines of Christ. Holiness, righteousness, and all these things, they, they, they abide in Christ. It is Christ himself. So why are we trying to preach doctrines minus Jesus? Why are we trying to preach sanctification minus Jesus? Jesus is your sanctifier. You receive him, you receive the sanctifying presence of the life of Christ in your being. He sets you apart. But we don't preach that. We have made sanctification a thing. A thing, something that we go and, and look for. No, sanctification is Jesus you not know, being made real in the form of holiness in your being. Ah, yes. Let me keep on. It says here. Ah, if you, if you, okay. Is, is the word of God not Christ himself? Yes, it is Christ himself who has been given to you as the word. And so when you take hold of the word, it is a person you have taken hold of. Yes, it is a person you are receiving and you take hold of. It is indeed awesome and amazing indeed. Don't you feel it in your heart? Remember, I told you about the word of God that you, you don't feel the word of God when you read it. Listen to it. Don't you feel it in your heart when you read the word of God? I ask you, do you not feel it deeply, deeply in your being when you read the word of God? But it is true that in many people's lives, their hearts are asleep as the fat of lambs and are not stirred up when they read the word of God. When you read the word, does, does it, oh, does it burn? Does it, does it, does it just get hold of your inside when you're reading it? Ah. They do read the word of God, but it has no impact in their innermost being. Their hearts are not stirred up. How then can you maintain a life of communion and fellowship with the Lord your God? When the word of God does not stir your heart. When the word of God does not open your being to God, how do you fellowship with Christ? Ah, yes, God. Yes, yes. He says, uh, uh, and, and yet it is by the word. Yes, by the word that you can commune with the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I have told you. Have I not? I have told you about the word. And so you should take good hold of the word. Yes, lay hold of the word of God. And remember that I myself, I did not leave out the word of God in all I did. I myself is who? The Father God. If Christ is the word and the Father is saying, I myself, I did not leave out the word of God in everything I did. What does that tell you? Ah, I myself, and remember that if I myself, I did not leave out the word in all I did, how can you live it out and expect to succeed in what you do? You cannot leave out the word, leave out the word and do what you need to do today. You cannot. And so what I wanted you to hear and understand is what I have given to you. Open your inner being and be truthful to the Lord. And as I have already told you, the eternal Lord God is not partial. And does not discriminate. No, he does not overlook a anything when he renders judgment. He is impartial. He has handed down and committed all things about judgment over to the son. Yes, everything about judgment lies in the hands of the son. And it is the son who will do everything. And so humble yourselves and be obedient to him. Yes, be very obedient to the son. Yes, obey him. And do not seek to overlook anything you must pay attention to. What the son tells you, do it. Well, who talking? The father is telling, father God is saying, what the son tells you, do it. Ah, yes, God. Says here. What the son tells you to do, that and that alone you must do. Yes, that only you must do. You should not do anything different from what the son tells you to do. 
Are you hearing me? You see, you see how narrow the walk is? When Jesus tells you anything, how many, how many things has the Lord given to us in his messages? Are, are we doing that? How many instructions has the Lord given to us as to how to live with him, walk with him, surrender to him? Are we doing that? But we want to hear more messages. Don't you see that when, when you don't obey the message, it hardens your heart. Don't, don't forget, if you don't obey the word of God that you are reading, your heart hardens. It says here, ah, now listen, now listen to me. The way has been ordered for you to follow through with your journey. There is no need to struggle to establish a new path. All you need to do is simply follow the path established so you can arrive at your destination. The way has been prepared for us by Jesus Christ. You don't need to ignore the pathway that is, that is established for us to walk on. So we can, we can arrive at our destination, which is heaven. Follow that path alone. Don't turn to the left nor to the right. Okay? He says here, all you need to do is simply follow the path established so you can arrive at your destination. Is it not what you need to do? Yes, indeed. That's all you need to do. And so, that is how it is for you now. Christ has opened the door for you to follow through with your journey. Your journey from earth to heaven. All you need to do is calmly and quietly and patiently to walk in it till the end of your journey. And also you should seek to please him. And that's all you need to do. And so that's all there is. There is nothing more to add. It is I myself, the eternal Lord God, the almighty. Yes, it is I myself. No power can compare to mine and no one can be compared to me. Yes, indeed, I love the song. Yes, I love the song indeed. Yes, the song is about me, myself, the almighty eternal Lord God. There is no power that can compare to my power. And no one that can, that, that can be compared to me. Ah, ah, now tell me, who is it that can be compared to me? What do you find in this world that you can compare to me? Tell me. Yes, tell me, the eternal Lord God, the almighty God, the God of wonders and signs. I am awesome and fearful indeed. I do not boast, nor do I exalt myself. I am meek and humble. Ah, a mighty God like me. The almighty God himself. Have you ever seen that he boasts or of anything or that he exalts himself? A mighty God like that. Wouldn't you be boasting? So no, we don't boast. Neither me nor my son nor the Holy Ghost. Ah, the Almighty God Himself. Have you ever seen that that He boasts of anything or that He exalts Himself? Have you ever seen that that He's He's a disorderly God? He carries out His works in confusion. The Almighty does does everything in order. And in justice, he does not act in confusion. Everything is in order and everything is clean. This orderliness and confusion and chaos are not part of his nature. Not part of his conduct nor attitude. And so, as I have already revealed it to you, all that is expected of you is obedience. Yes, obedience unto the Lord. Humility and humbleness of heart is what you must show towards the Lord. But know that the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places. My Lord. The line, in other words, you've been dealt you know, well you know, by the God. The Lord has dealt well with you. That's what he's saying. That is Psalm 16. The lines have fallen in pleasant places for you. Wow. Yes, y'all. But know that the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places. Yes, you have a goodly heritage. Do not be stubborn 
and hard-hearted. Remember this word. Do not be stubborn and hard-hearted. What the Lord will tell you to do, do that and that alone. Now, when you take steps towards getting something done, don't you receive help and assistance to get it done and complete the task? When you take steps, people can come and help you. But if you do not take steps towards what he has asked you to do, will there arise any help? No, there will not be any help. But if you take the steps, then there will come help for you to help, for you to help you to complete the assigned task. And that's all there is for you. There is nothing more to add to it. It was the song which caused me to calm down. Yes, the song is what brought me today. It is, yeah, and it is true indeed. There is no power that can compare with my power. No one can be compared to me. It is the Lord. Yes, the Lord God is almighty God. Yes, yes, when I say the Lord, I mean Christ. Yes, it is Christ I'm talking about when I say the Lord. Okay, the the one and only Lamb of God. They are not two. It is only one Lamb of God. Who has an, who has an only Lamb? Not two, but one. And will sacrifice it. As the Almighty Eternal Lord God did and offered up His only Lamb as a sacrifice for the people. Who would do that? If you only have one Lamb, would you sacrifice it up for the people? But the eternal Lord God had an only lamb and offered it up for the people. Ah, ah, you are blessed indeed. Yes, you are blessed indeed. The love of the almighty Lord God is awesome and amazing. You can never understand. No, you can never, un uh, never ever comprehend the love of God. It is far beyond your understanding. Because what the eternal Lord God, the Almighty, does is foolishness to the human beings. It's foolishness to human beings what the Lord does. Yes, it is folly. And people can never understand it. Yes. You too cannot understand. You must not seek to understand because you can never do so. Ah, it is far beyond your ability to comprehend. Only believe. Yes, you must only believe and receive it in your heart and walk in it and dwell in it. But what God does is always folly to human beings because human beings do not have any understanding about God. To them, what God does is all foolishness. It is by the mercy of God and the grace of God that human beings can receive the understanding of God's love. And so that's all there is for you. There is nothing more to add to it. That is the, that's the first message. Amina. Amina. Then I said the first message was 647. Okay, and at 654, the second message comes. After the first message, okay, we began to sing the song again. And a few minutes later, the Lord returned and began to speak. Notice, understand this. Yes, 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 that's it. Yes, that's it indeed. Yes, that's it indeed. It is I myself again. Yes, it is I myself again indeed. But who else do you have? Who else do you have in heaven? I ask you, who else do you have in heaven? Yes, it is I. Yes, I. The Father himself. Yes, the eternal Lord God, the Almighty. Yes, the eternal Lord God loves his children. I say the eternal Lord God loves his children. I ask you, what father will beget children and will not love them? A father like that is not a good father. Yes, a father like that is not a good father at all. And so what I have come to tell you, 
you must uh, to, to tell you must be taken seriously by you. You must pay attention to what I have spoken to you. Yes, I say pay attention and listen attentively to what I have given to you. Know that there is no one else you have besides the eternal Lord God. No, you have no one else besides me who will speak to you the way I have spoken to you. Yes, indeed, it is I. Yes, I, the eternal Lord God. Yes, it is I myself. Yes, it is true. Yes, it is true indeed. But should there be any doubt in your heart and in your mind? Should there, should there be any doubt? Should there be any doubt? There is no doubt whatsoever. When the eternal Lord God speaks, whatever you or whether you understand what he says or not, all you've got to do is simply to believe him. And trust him. Yes. Only believe and trust him. And it shall be so. You do not need to understand him. In what he is doing. Or says he will do. No. 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 Your part in what the eternal Lord God plans to do. Is simply to accept it. Believe it. And to trust him. Yes. That is all he expects of you. Yes, receive it. Believe it and trust him. Yes, believe and trust. And when you do that, then understanding will come to you. Yes, only believe and then understanding will be given to you. Yes, I say only believe and then understanding will come to you. But if you do not believe, and trust me in what I tell you, then there will be no understanding. Because how can understanding come to you if you do not believe? And so in dealing with the eternal Lord God, whatever he will tell you, whatever he tells you to do, you just go ahead. You just go ahead. You hear that? Go ahead and do it. Let me tell you, let me go back again. But if you do not believe and trust me in what I tell you, then there will be no understanding. Because how can understanding come to you if you do not believe? And so in dealing with the eternal Lord God, in dealing with the eternal Lord God, right? In dealing with the eternal Lord God, whatever he, he will tell you, Whatever he tells you to do, you just go ahead and do it. Yes, just take steps towards doing what he told you. Do not strive with the Lord God. Do not strive with the Lord God and tell him, listen, and tell him, ah, Lord God, how can such a thing be, you know, be done? He said, don't go there. Don't. <laughs> ah, Lord God, how can such a thing be, not be done? No, no, no. Do not argue with him and strive. Do not strive with the eternal Lord God. Just go ahead and do it. Whether you understand or not. Whether it makes sense or not, that is not what matters. You just go ahead and do whatever he tells you to do. Because to him, everything makes sense. He understands and knows exactly what he is doing and what he wants to do. And why he is doing what he is doing. All makes perfect sense to him. And so, this is all there is for you. There is nothing more to add. That's the end of the second message. Right? Now, the third message, 701. Third message. After the second message, we once again began to sing the song and to praise the Lord and to thank Him. And again, a few minutes later, the Lord returned again and began to speak to us again. For the third time. 
Yes, 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 it is I myself again. Yes, it is I myself. The same eternal Lord God himself. Yes, it's the eternal Lord God. The Father himself. Yes, your Father God. Yes, the eternal Father himself. Your Father who is in heaven, whose name is sanctified and holy. Yes, his name is purified, sanctified and holy. And whoever will play with that name, that so to his own peril. This is true because he abhors, he abhors, he abhors or abhors evil and all uncleanness. He hates them. Yes, he abhors evil. It is true indeed. Now, I want you, here comes your, your instruction. Here comes the command from the Lord. Here comes the command from the Lord to every one of you. Now, I want you to convey to all my children and let them know and understand. Yes, I say, let all my children hear and understand that I, the eternal of God, I desire to do great and mighty things. Yes, I want to do great and mighty things. And so, I want all of you. I want who? Some of you. Did you hear that too? Are you part of the all of you? I say, are you part of the all of you or not? <laughs> and so I want all of you to yield and surrender yourselves to me. Can I go on? Can I go on? Jesus. Oh, maybe, maybe, okay, okay. Maybe he said, I want all of you to come to the barbecue dinner that I'll be preparing in the church. You have so many barbecue dinners and you ain't yielding to him. So I ain't no barbecue no more. Okay, let me go back, you know, and read it again. And so I want all of you to yield and surrender yourselves to me and believe and trust me. Yes, they must believe me and trust me with your whole heart because the eternal Lord God Listen to this. The eternal Lord God must do great and mighty works. He has to do them. You tell you that time has come. I want to do great and mighty works. I need my people to yield to me. Yes, they must believe me. And trust me with all, with your whole heart. Because the eternal Lord God must do great and mighty works. He needs to do great and mighty works. Now, what I am saying now, has the Lord not already revealed that to you? And told you that already? Has the Lord, that is Father God now. What I'm telling you that I must do, has the Lord not told you already? Yes, indeed. The Lord has already revealed this word to you about the great and mighty things he needs to do and must do. I say the Lord has already revealed that to you. Or oh, have you forgotten that? Yes, the time has come. Yes, it is time for the eternal Lord God to Isaiah Zukrambo Isaiah Gadagas. 
Ooh, I love this. <laughs> I never heard this before. <laughs> I've never heard God before that, that he does this stuff. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was said only of Paul. <laughs> now listen. Yes, the time has come. Yes, it is time for the eternal Lord God to turn the world upside down. Does that inclu include Detroit? Can you have the faith to believe and see God turning Detroit upside down until Detroit gets right? Can you believe that, you who come from this place? And those of you online, whatever city you are in, wherever you are, can you believe God that he can turn your city upside down? Says here, I say, the time has come. Yes, it is time for the eternal Lord God to turn the world upside down. Yes, to turn this world upside down completely in order to save the people. Note it, to save the people, right? To deliver the people from death, to deliver the people from their wickedness and accursed lifestyles, to deliver the people from their sicknesses, deacon, you hear me? The time has come for the eternal Lord God to deliver the people from their sicknesses and diseases of all kinds. Are we ready now for God to use us? Are we ready for our God now to come down? Do we now go, are, are we now going to expect God to do that? Can we pay the price of total surrender to him? Okay. So let me see it again. The time, yes, the time has come. Yes, it is time. For the eternal Lord God to turn the world upside down. Yes, to turn this world upside down completely in order to save the people. Yes, to save people, to deliver people from death, to deliver people from their wickedness and accursed lifestyle, to deliver people from their sicknesses and diseases of all kinds. And so, because of that, because of his plan, because of what he has revealed to you that he must do, it's not that he wants to. He must do it. The hour has come for the world to see their God. The last time they will see God in action so that they can believe him. Because of that, let my children hear and understand and know that this is what the eternal Lord God desires to do. And so, they must, they must surrender and yield all their lives unto me. They should prepare themselves, ain't done. They should prepare themselves and get themselves ready. Because the eternal Lord God, your father God himself, who is feared and worshipped, in the midst of the assembly of the holy ones. <laughs> Woo! In the midst of the assembly of the holy ones in heaven. He is feared by them. They fear him. He said, listen. Your father God himself. Who is feared and worshipped. In the midst of the assembly of the holy ones. Has said. The Father God has said <laughs> that he wants to turn the whole world upside down. Yes, indeed, it is true. Now, do you not see it when you read the word of God? Do you not see my servant Paul? Have you not heard the testimony of the scriptures which was born by the people in the Acts of the Apostles? What was the testimony of the people? The people who have turned the world upside down have come here also. And Jason has received them. 
That is the testimony in the in the Acts of the Apostles. You read that in uh, Acts uh, Thessalonians chapter seven, uh, what, what? Acts chapter seventeen, verse six. These people who have turned the world upside down have come here and they have received. Them. Oh yeah, they're gonna receive us. I say the Lord God who's gonna turn this this nation upside down, gonna turn Detroit upside down, gonna turn this whole mighty nation upside down. We are his servants. We belong to him. Go gather people. God's got an army marching through the land. Deliverance is their song with healing in their wings, everlasting joy and gladness in his heart. And in this army, we all got a part. I say in this army, we all got a part. Are you ready to surrender to him? The people who have turned the world upside down have come here. <laughs> we are already in Detroit, brother. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, pastor, we will do that through which. Oh no, we do, we doing that three weeks. This, this, this is our commitment to this call. I say this is our commitment to this call. We are going to declare unto God we are ready for it. We are ready for it and therefore we're going to go 21 days. We're going to go 21 days not lying before God. Brother, we must show the Lord that we are ready. That we are ready. We are ready. Are you already or are you are sleeping? Are you already or are you are sleeping? Who is ready? We want to see God? He said, I'm ready. I say, I say, you want to see God? Have we not been hoping to see some God coming down from heaven? Now he said, I'm coming. He said, I want to do this thing. Said that's me, said my choice. I want to turn the world upside down. It is time. It is time. Woo. 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 Yes, God. My God is coming to town. Our God is coming to town. Go wrong. <laughs> He said, now, the eternal Lord God, listen to this. You, you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't joyful yet. Listen to this. The eternal Lord God, when he goes into a city, he does not, uh, he does so in order to turn that city upside down. Yes, he turns it upside down and takes over the city. I, but I, I, I don't think y'all have faith to believe this. I, I, I say, I don't, say, I don't think y'all, you, you will see this God. I say, you will see him. You, if you like, don't believe, where do I go? But we will see God. Those of us who are willing to believe, we shall see our God. We long for our God. We long to see Jesus turn this city upside down. Uh, yes, indeed. He takes over the city in order to do his works, which he needs to do in the city. You are saying, you know, and then I was making some, the, the way I was born with him, I said, yeah, that's it, that's it. And the Lord said, now hold on, don't, hold on. don't you know that I know that's it? <laughs> don't you think I know that that's it? Indeed, what I'm saying, that's it? I said, yes, Lord, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> he said that you are saying that shit indeed about, about what I'm saying and then what, what should I say myself I know that shit exactly that's what I want to do <laughs> Woo, brother no one can stop God his mind is made I say his mind is made who go with the Lord who go with the Lord hallelujah Hallelujah. Who go with the Lord? Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Here am I. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He says here, 
I know that <laughs> he says, I know that that's, that's, that's what I seek to do and what I must do when I go into a city. That's what I must do. So I'm coming here to do that. Okay, he said, that he says here. And so that's it indeed. Yes, indeed, it is true. Now, you must understand that I do not go into a city just for sightseeing. <laughs> oh, brother, can you believe with me? Can you put a God means business? <laughs> but Antonio, are you ready? <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you believe that God means business? He said, I don't go for sightseeing in a city. When I go there, I'm not going to just to look around at, their, at their, what they do. They all know I'm coming to turn it over down. <laughs> ah, brother, 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 brother. Wow. <laughs> yes, God. Now, you must understand that I do not go into a city just for sightseeing. No, 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 no. It is because I've got a job to do in that city. And that is why I go there. And when I go into the city, I must and have to turn it upside down. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I've never seen a God, a God you know, so serious like this. No, we, we all know God. We'll be talking to him, but he never spoken like this. This tells you the hour is nigh. The hour is nigh for God to demonstrate you know, what he can do in a city. Turn the city upside down, brother. Brother, be ready. All of you will be used by God. That's why he says, surrender your lives to me. Because he wants to use your life. He can send you go here. <sighs> listen, listen. Listen, did you read, uh, did, did you read uh, uh, John G. Lee's uh, no, uh, writings about the guy in South Africa who when he went into the bush, yeah, they said he would die you know, with something and then he, he, he got a letter and then put a letter before the Lord. He said, hey, Lord. He said, yeah, 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 yeah Van Buren. Yeah, Van Buren. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that's a fire. His name is fire. Fire. God set him on fire. He healed him. Put Holy Ghost on him. Brother, he was going from prime minister to prime minister's office. And as soon as they saw them, he fell, they fell down. Going to flee. Going to go and hide. Because he said he was so strange. He got power in his soul. Listen, it's time for God to put his power upon his children. That's why he says, yield to me. That's all. That, because he will send individuals around. You go and talk to somebody. You go there, they fall in your face. They start screaming for help. Get ready for a mighty revival. Ah, ah. Now you must understand that I do not go into a city for sightseeing. No, no, no. It is because I've got a job to do in that city. And that is why I go there. And when I go into the city, I must. And have to turn it upside down. And do what I have to do there before I leave. <laughs> we are going to stay there for some time. <laughs> ah, yes, God. It is, it is so. Because I have already. Listen to this. I said, the hour has come. This thing has been planned from time immemorial. He had planned what he wants to do in the end times. So listen, this is what he's saying. Uh, it is so because I have already planned my works and made them ready for the appointed time. Yes, from the foundation of the world, I prepared all my works. I prepared everything and got everything ready in advance and everything is in order. And so when the appointed time comes, there is no missing the time. I do not overlook it at all. If I need to turn a city or a nation upside down, I will turn it upside down indeed. If I have to hang it, the city in the air, oh, Zama, Gaza, Gaza. Gaza. if I have to take the whole city, hang it in the air, I will do that too. <laughs> Woo! Ah, uh, yes, God. He said here. And if I have to hang the city in the air, I will also do that. The eternal Lord God, the Almighty, he does all things. There is nothing too hard for him to do. And whatever he does is always good. 
Yes, everything he does is all good. It is only what is good that he does. So he's turning the city upside down. It should allow righteousness to rule there. It should bring things in order. It should really turn the very eyes of the city towards God. Ah, yes, God. You remember, Detroit has, has seen a revival before. My bill. But that, yeah, that, that, that revival, that's what, but, but, that's right, ladder rain. The, yeah, the, the Detroit has been visited before. This one is end time. The last days now. The last days now. Get ready. Don't worry about what them devils say. You just get your ready, your, yourself ready for your God. The power is his. Don't worry about how you're going to get power. That's not no, your, your business. You make sure that your vessel is clean. Make sure that you, you yield to him and tell Lord, I am part of this thing. I want to be part of this agenda and surrender my life to you. Ah, yes, God. Yes, God. You say here. Yeah, the eternal Lord God does not do evil things for those whom he created in his image and, and, and likeness. No, no, no. Because he loves them. You see the motive why he's coming? He loves them. He don't want that they should perish. But there will be some judgment. For those who ain't going to surrender to him, he will deal with them. Because he's going to say it here. Say so, yeah, the eternal Lord God does not do evil things for those whom he created in his, in his image and likeness. No, no, no. Because he loves them. It is only what is good that he does for them. Yes, he does for them only what is good. Now, whoever... The eternal Lord God will deal, listen, whoever the eternal Lord God will have to deal with, will have to deal bitterly with, some that he has to deal bitterly with, okay, it is because they are very stubborn and rebellious and hard-hearted. If I have to, I'm coming to do good things, good for the people. But those who are stubborn and rebellious and hard-hearted, I'm going to deal with them bitterly. Now, whoever the eternal Lord God will deal bitterly with is very stubborn and rebellious. Yes, they have to be stubborn and rebellious for the eternal Lord God to deal bitterly with them. Yes, it will be because they were not obedient to the Lord God and chose rather to be stubborn and disobedient and rebellious. And that is why the Lord God dealt bitterly with them. So the choice is yours. You're going to be hard-hearted. You're going to be rebellious and go your own way after you heard what he's asking for. You do that to your own peril. I told you that there's a solution. If you join this agenda... You are as good as you know, already on the pathway to heaven. Because when you yield to him, okay, you have surrendered the very thing that leads you astray, your will. You surrender your will to God and the will of God is your will. Then you walk in righteousness. You walk in the will of God. You do what pleases him. How, how don't you end up in heaven? But if you turn your heart away to go and do your own thing, brother. You may be in the places where the living waters don't come. And it will be too late for you. He says here. Ah. He says uh, to be stubborn and disobedient. Okay, that's what the Lord did, uh, did, dealt bitterly with them. But the eternal Lord God is a lover. He is gracious. And he is good. His mercy and loving kindness is like the rain that drizzles upon the people. Ah, and he is awesome and to be feared indeed and very amazing. You do not take him for granted and just play with him in disrespect. If you walk with him, you must do so quietly and calmly and in obedience. Oh, brother, this is the phrase he uses to describe the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, the Lord, if he ain't to told him anything, he walks Kung, kung in our language means quiet and calm. 
The Lord just walked quiet. Did Isaiah not say, my servant, you ain't going to hear him making some noise in the street? He said, quietly until he has brought righteousness all right, into victory. So the Lord walked quietly and calmly, untroubled by anything, by just re re looking to the Father and his instructions. Okay, the walk in the spirit is very quiet and very peaceful and very, you know, you know, you know, joyful in your being. Okay, it's only the rebellion and disobedience that makes it harder in your heart. But he that obeys, he ain't got nothing to be afraid of. He that is in love with Jesus ain't fearing nothing. The inner life, love, joy, peace is the very center of his being. Ah, says here, but the eternal Lord God is a lover. He is gracious and he is good. His mercy and loving kindness is like the rain that drizzles upon the people. And he is awesome and to be feared indeed and very amazing. You do not take him for granted and just play with him in disrespect. If you walk with him, you must do so quietly and calmly and in obedience. That's all he needs from you. If he tells you to stand here, listen. If the Lord tells you to stand here, just do that. <laughs> Simple commands. Obey it. It don't make sense to you. Obey it. You don't know why? Still obey it. <laughs> okay, say here. Ah, yes, God. If he tells you to stand here, just do so. If he tells you to move on, do so. If he tells you to sleep, just do so. This exactly is what the eternal Lord God seeks from you. Simple obedience. No complication. No simply obey your daddy God as children who trust their father God. That's why he tells you, unless you receive the kingdom as a little child, you never enter into it. But little child, I stay here. All right, daddy, I'm, I'll sit here and wait for you. All right, sit here. All right, daddy gonna go there. All right. So he sit down there quietly. Okay, when you have been broken in as a horse, as a wild horse, you don't stand there for nobody. Uh, have you ever seen a, a wild horse? A wild horse is a, some, oh, he's gone. <laughs> okay, the harness of the horse. Okay, all right. But when a, a horse is broken in, you put it here, that's it. He stand, read the harness of the horse. Read them. How the one that was trained and broken in, how he was at attention waiting for the master. He ain't doing nothing. The rebellious one was roaming up in the mountain. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Very soon his wild freedom came to a stop. But there's, no, 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 there's no more water, no more food, no more nothing, all dried up. Right then, he comes around back to the what? Uh, back to the to, uh, to the farm. Yeah, yeah, the, the the place where his his friend was. Okay, who didn't bolt away? And he sees him at attention. Hey, hey, brother! Ooh, brother! The brother don't answer nothing. Hey, brother! How come you so beautiful? Well, I'm beautiful because you know I obeyed my master. That's right, yeah. My master made me beautiful after I learned to obey. Wow. But you said you want to go your own. So, so go ahead. well, I'm down here. Ain't no water here no more. <laughs> I'm out right in the mountains. It's all, it's all dry grass. I can, well, you know, it was your choice. Me, I don't like anything. My master just has clothed me with his beautiful, you know, stuff on me. I'm waiting for him to take him to where he needs to go. Simple obedience. That's what the Lord is asking for. I'm telling you. He ain't asking for complication, you know, you know, answers. All right? So he says here, Ah, if the Lord tells you to stand here, just do so. 
If he tells you to move on, do so. If he tells you to sleep, just do so. This exactly is what the Lord, the eternal Lord God seeks from you. Nothing else. He does not need anything from you. He does not need you to be talking back to him when he tells you to do something. Note that. He doesn't want, want you arguing with him and, and talking some stuff back to him. And, 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 and talking under your, under your, 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 uh, your breath and, <laughs> and in your throat. <laughs> he does not need you to be talking back to him when he tells you something. No, no, no. And so that's all there is for you. Now, I am done. Yes, now I have come to the end of what I wanted to speak to you. My children, the way is open to you. Permission is granted for you to go on your trip. My peace be upon you. Yes, my peace be upon you. And my peace be upon all of my children. In Jesus' name. Amen now. Amina. 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 Amina, Amina, brother. Amina. Oh, yes, God. Ah, yeah, brother. You, you, you ought to be giving God a standing ovation. Because what God has said, we never, never heard it before. This is the future. This is the vision of the future. Those who have eyes to see, this is what your life is going to be. This is what your life is going to be when you allow God. When you allow God to do what he has promised. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Now, I'm going to ask you. I know, I know I have to give you the opportunity to answer to God. What God has said to you. What the Lord God has said that he wants to do. And what he has demanded of you, that you should yield your lives completely to him for what he wants to do. Are you in favor of it? Are you ready to do that or you don't want to do that? Aye. 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 That's what they say in Congress. Yeah. Those online... You have heard the word of God. You have heard the promise of the Lord, what he wants to do in this end time for the nations of this earth. Are you willing to be part of it? If so, are you willing to yield your lives to him as he's asking? Is, is everybody online willing to, to cooperate with the Lord? Yes, God. Ah. If you want to, would you come and gather in front here so that we all have everybody online with us? Yeah. We are all now coming before the Lord and asking him, here we are, O oh Lord. We depend on you. We have no power of our own. We want to do what you are asking us, O oh God. We know what you say is true. We hear deep in our hearts what you want to do and the need there is of having the people that will surrender to you. My Father and my God, here we are together with those online. In the name of Jesus Christ, we've come before you. My God and my King, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to surrender our lives to you so we'll be partakers of the divine plan. So that we'll be part of what you have planned to do from time immemorial. Oh God, my King, here we are. We are the brethren in Michigan. The brethren that don't look, look like any, anything at all in the eyes of the world. 
But I know in the eyes of Almighty God and Daddy God, Father, we are the very people that you are looking to. You want us, you've spoken to us several times. And now is the time for us to show you. Here we are, O oh Lord. Here we are. We are willing to yield our lives to you. Amen. We are willing to surrender our lives to you as you demanded. Oh my God and my King. My God and my King, have mercy upon us. And grant us the power. Grant us, O oh God, the anointing. To be able to surrender completely to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now Lord we ask and call upon thy name. Jesus. Jesus. Here am I. Here am I. Take my life. Take my life. Let it be consecrated to you. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We are willing to yield to you. We are willing to please you. I know you will give us the strength. I know when we surrender to you, you will empower us to live the life, to draw close to you. So you can have a people. A people. That are prepared for you. I thank you Heavenly Father. That this day. It is recorded in heaven. That we came forward. And said Father. Here we are. And here I am. In the name of Jesus. I surrender to you. Do with me as you please. As you please. please. (laughs) In Jesus' name. name. We depend on you, Holy Spirit. We have no power of our own. I say we depend on you, Holy Spirit. We have no power of our own. I say we have no power of our own. We have no power of our own. depend on you Holy Spirit we have no power of our own Pastor Fields would you pray for all of us and those online also and Brother Dwayne will also lift it up before the Lord pray for all of us Father This is why we're here. Lord, we thank you, Lord God. This is such an encouraging word. Because, Lord God, we have sacrificed. Mm. We have cried out. We have waited on you, God, for years, Lord. And now, Lord God, everything that has been wrought in the last several weeks, Mm. even the preparation for this consecration, this 21 days was ordained of you. Yeah. We didn't know this word was coming, Father. Mm. So, Lord, we know that we're right there yeah. at the threshold, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Right about to go over into the deep things of God. Yeah. Lord, this is what we were called for, Lord God. Yeah. We were all, those online and those that are here, yeah. we were called for such a time as this. Yes! This is why we're here, Lord God. Yes, Thank Lord. you, Jesus. In this generation, oh God. Yes, God. Yeah. We could have been born a hundred years ago or the Lord tarry a hundred years in the future, but we were born for such a time as this. Yes, God. Despite the wickedness, despite the evil that's in in our world, we're more capable to do it through him who strengthens us. Yes, God. It's not us, but Christ who's going to do the work. And Lord Jesus, you kept your word. 
You say that you were going to build your church. Ah, the church, Lord God. Like you did on the day of Pentecost. Lord God, Yande. Christianity has not failed. Amen. Yes, yes, God. The work of God has not failed. Yeah. Because there are people that are hungry. Yes, God. There are people that are thirsty ah. after God. Amen. Ah, yes, God. Ah, Lord God, we're going to do your will. Yes, God. Yes, we're going to bring the will of God to this yes, generation. God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Father, we thank you, Lord. Yes, thank God. Father, we give you praise. Hey, yes, God. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Ah, yada. Glory to God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Brother Dwayne, would you lift up? The whole congregation, the whole of the brethren, online and here before the Almighty God, commending them to the will of God, to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the inheritance of the saints. Yes, yes God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, for such a precious treasure. Mm. Ah, for such a blessedness, God, an unveiling of yourself, Lord yes, God. God. Such a gift that you have given to us. Lord, now we commit ourselves unto thee. Lord, that you would give us a seeing eye. Give us a brokenness, oh God. Let us stay in that place of brokenness, oh God. That we will stay yielded to thee. Stay yielded to your will. Stay yielded to your purpose, oh God. Lord, too many times. We have gotten up and done our own thing, oh God, without even consulting you, without even acknowledging you. Lord, we surrender today afresh. Yes, God. That thy will, thy will alone will be done, oh God. Lord, that whatever the purpose, whatever the cause, whatever the case, Lord God, we will have that childlike obedience yes, to obey you, O oh God, ah, to do your will, O oh God, will, even if it cost us, Lord God, yes, to our Lord. own hurt, yes, to Lord. our own demise. Hey. Lord, your will must take the priority, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your word must be a preeminence in our heart. Yes, Lord. But, Lord God, we give thee the honor that is due you, Lord. We give you your proper place, O oh God. Yes, that you alone are God. Yes, Lord. Oh God, that we would not talk back, that we would not fight, that we would not argue with you. No, that we would honor you as we should. Yes. That you alone are God. Yes, and we are your servants. Oh Lord, we ask for strength. Lord God, that our mind be determined yes, to obey your will, Lord God. That's it. You need the preeminence, yes. oh God. Above all others. Yes. Above all others, oh God. Yes. You deserve the preeminence. Yes. You deserve it, Lord. Above our plans. Yes. Above our thoughts. Yes. Above yes. our purpose. Yes. Above our will. Yes. Your will, oh God. Yes. Your will be done. Yes. Ah, Father God, we thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank we you. embrace your will, Lord God. We see, our eyes see, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we have eyes to see, Lord God, and ears to hear. So, Lord God, let us look, Lord God, as the servant looks to the master. Let our eyes be set on thee, O oh God, to do thy will, that we would delight that we will find pleasure in your will, Lord. Yes. That we'll find pleasure in obeying you. Yes, God. And that we'll commune with you, O oh God. Yes. And rejoice in our communion, yes. our walking yes. with you, O oh God. Yes. And we'll leave the rest to you, Father yes. God. Yes. We thank you, Father mm -hmm. God. Thank you for the blessedness mm -hmm. to walk with you. Oh, the blessedness mm -hmm. of the poor in spirit. The blessedness, oh God, of relying on you alone. Thank you, 
you, Lord, for being blessed. Thank you, Lord, that you are everything, oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that we won't rely on ourselves. We won't rely on the flesh, oh God. Oh, the blessed of those who are poor in spirit. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I surrender all to him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily breathe. I surrender all, oh, surrender all. I surrender, I surrender all, all to Jesus, Jesus, Savior. I surrender. Heavenly Father, I want to give you all the glory and all the honor, all the praise. For you alone have guided us up to this very moment, this very awesome moment of decision. That, oh God, is going to turn, oh God, our lives upside down for the mighty will of God to come to pass in our being. The very things we have hoped for since we believed. We are about, oh God, to be thrust into it in the master's care. The master himself leading us, oh Lord. Lord, into this adventure, this glorious adventure, of taking the gospel to the uttermost bounds of the earth. Father, what is happening here might, might seem a little something. But Father, what a huge step. What a mighty step it is in the eyes of heaven. My God and my King, honor the commitment of your children. Honor the commitment of all those online and all those in this house present before you. Oh my God. Oh, my God, unto thee we surrender. I brought your word to your people. Lord, they have received it. Lord, they have demonstrated their willingness to surrender their wills to you. My Lord and my God, seal this commitment. Lord, seal this commitment with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That they will never turn back. They will never go back on their commitment. Amen. But Lord, they will press on. They will press on. They will press on. Until Jesus Christ be magnified yes. in the nations of this earth. Yes. Father, to you be the glory. Yes. To you be the honor. Yes. Great things you have done. Yes. And great things you are about to do. Yes. And great things are about to happen. And our very eyes shall behold the mighty move of God. Our very ears, Lord, shall hear things we've never seen before. We shall see and we shall bear witness of what the living God who lives has accomplished through a people who don't resemble a people. And yet in the eyes of God, they are mighty vessels of God. Father, we surrender to you. Receive the surrender and seal it for thy courts above. Let your blood, Lord, sanctify each vessel. Let your blood sanctify each, each heart. Let the glory of God, Lord, fill the within of their being. Let the arm of the Almighty God touch each heart. Father, Father. Lord, release your anointing upon these vessels and preserve them from the attacks of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for what is taking place right this very moment. We are all bound together. The brethren of Michigan are petitioning heaven that, Father, your will be done. Your will be done here on earth. 
as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. And so it shall be. And so it shall be. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be with each one of you in their majestic glory, in their majestic peace, majestic love and joy, in the contentment of a heart that is yielded to God. May your heart be filled with the contentment and gladness of the presence of God in your being. Yes, God. Father, we thank you, and it shall be so, because you, you have ordained it to be so, and we shall honor you with our commitment in the 21-day fast. We shall honor our commitment to God with a 21-day fast to seal our commitment, and everyone that will take part of it, Lord, help them, give them strength to go, because I know them devils are going to fight. Lord, give us grace and mercy, Lord, to stay in touch with this commitment to the end. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amina. Amina. Glory. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. You've made that commitment. Don't break it. You will be tempted. But the Lord will give you grace. The Lord is going to safeguard this commitment. Because this commitment is real to him. This commitment is for his glory. So the Lord is going to strengthen each one of you. Fear not. The Lord is going to strengthen you. And sustain you. To go through this 21 day fast. Ah yes God. God is faithful who has called you to the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. And he will also do it. That's right. Amen. He will bring it to pass. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 All online. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Glory, Amina. Yes, God. All right. God bless you. We'll see you all tomorrow for the last part of the anointing, of the unction. All right. We shall complete the message of last night tomorrow. Hallelujah. God bless each one of you. And we shall see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow night in Jesus. Today I'm not coming to, to the line. We've all joined together and prayed. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. My God reigns. My God reigns. My God lives. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. Yes, God. God is good. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. He has done greater things. He will do unto the Lord, give the glory, great is he has done unto the Lord, oh, be the glory, great is he. Adikasya, Adikasya, why the chance to do no bear in your yam ka or suru yami Adikasya, why? Oh, in you, I'm Kawu, or Soro, Soro, Yami, Adikasia, why?
Yes, God. All right. All right. We'll see each one of you tomorrow by the mercy of God. Amen. Remember, those who want to do the fast, it shall be from uh, uh, September 1st through, through the 21st. Amen. We've made a commitment to God. We're going to maintain our commitment and seal it with a fast. Amen. Hallelujah. And remember, great things are going to happen to you when you, when you go through this fast. Because we are all going to be fasting together. Hallelujah, brother. <laughs>